Now, when do we resolve a vector into its components? How do you know when to do this and why is it necessary? We need to know how to resolve a vector or break a vector down into its components if you are asked a question like this and they ask you to work out the resultant or the net vector. Now, one thing that is very clear from this diagram is that all three of these vectors, the 40 Newton, the 25 Newton and the 50 Newton, all three of those vectors are acting at an angle. So the most important thing for you to know is that we resolve a vector into components or break a vector down into its components if the vector is acting at an angle. Now you could say to me, ma'am, what do you mean acting at an angle? Well, you can see over here, I have a Cartesian plane. You've got the Y axis, you've got the X axis. If the vector acts straight up or straight down along the Y axis, like this one here, straight up, or straight down, it is not acting at an angle relative to the y-axis or relative to the x-axis. So we don't need to break it down into components. Same thing if I have to draw another vector for you guys over here, let's say it's acting directly to the right, straight along the y-axis, the x-axis. Is it acting at an angle? No. So therefore I do not need to break it down into components. We need to break a vector down into components when it's acting at an angle. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is the words resolving. So I've been using resolving. I've also been using breaking down a vector into components. Now, the first thing that I want to show you is what do I mean by components? If you have a look at this diagram over here, I hope you guys can see that this vector is going up and to the right. Up and to the right. So I hope you can see that in that general direction. If I have to resolve or break that vector down into components, ultimately it's going to give me two vectors. One of them will be going to the right and one of them will be going up. Together, the vector going to the right and the vector going up, together it gives me the resultant vector that's going up and to the right. So when I say resolve a vector into components, what I'm asking you to do is is I'm asking you to break it down into these two vectors. One going along the horizontal, we can call it the X component, okay? Or the parallel component, and one going along the vertical. Let's use a different color to highlight that. Let's use green. This is one going along the vertical. We can also call it the Y component or the perpendicular component. If I call the pink vector vector R, then the green one will be its Y component or RY. So I'm just gonna write your Y component. And then the yellow one will be its X component or RX. Alternative names for these components that you may see in textbooks, study guides, or that your teacher may use. RY can be referred to as the vertical components. It can also be referred to as the perpendicular component. And the reason why it can also be called the perpendicular component is because Y is perpendicular to the ground. So it's always relative to the surface. RX can be called obviously the X component, it can be called RX, it can be called the horizontal component. And horizontal because the horizon, I hope you know, is flat like this, the horizontal component or the parallel components. So those are the different words. Right, what about this vector, the next one? So take a look at this one. This one is going up and to the right. So its Y component is going up and its X component is going to the right. Up and to the right, the one goes up, the one goes to the right. What about this one? This one is going down and to the left down and to the left. So if I have to resolve this into its components, the RY, let's call this R again, RY will be going down and RX will be going to the left. Please excuse that my lines aren't completely straight. These are always at 90 degrees to each other. So RY would be going down, RX would be going left. And you can again say, ma'am, how did you know that? Look at the way that this arrow is pointing. It's going down and to the left. Okay, so if you see a vector 
on a Cartesian plane, or not necessarily even on a Cartesian plane, if you see a vector that acts at an angle, you know that you can break that vector down into its components. And we use trigonometry to calculate the magnitude of the components. So take a look at this vector. It doesn't really have a name. We can call it vector A. Let's call it vector A. And A can be broken down into AY and AX. Look how they're giving me that angle over there, that 30 degrees. So I'm going to break vector A down into a triangle that has a Y component and an X component. Let me show you. So I hope that you can see that if I have to break this down into its components, because the vector is pointing up and to the right, I will break it down as follows or resolve it as follows. Rx will go to the right. So I'm using this red vector to represent Rx. It'll be going to the right because the res this black vector is pointing up and to the right. And then Ry will be pointing up. Take a look at how that forms a nice little triangle over here. And the angle that they give me is 30 degrees. That's inside the triangle. This would be called Ry, or the Y component, or the vertical component, or the perpendicular component. And this red one would be Rx, or the horizontal component, or the parallel component. Right, now, another thing that I want to show you before I move on to how you actually do the maths is that, yes, I broke down this vector, let's call it R, into a triangle using 30 degrees. But I can also break down that vector, vector R, into another triangle. And instead of using 30 degrees, I can use this angle over here. If this angle is 30, what would this angle be over here? This angle over here would be 60 degrees. I hope you got that. If you did, well done. If you didn't and you're still not sure why, remember the y-axis and the x-axis meet at 90 degrees. So that means that this whole angle over here is 90 degrees. So if this is 30, that has to be 60. So let me show you how I would resolve that vector using the 60 degree angle. Right, so again, that vector, let's call it r, is going up and to the right. So my rx vector would be going to the right. My ry vector would be going up. I hope you can see that I have now also, I've also got a triangle. Use the 60 degrees. And there we go. I've broken up that vector that's going up and to the right into one vector that's going up and another vector that's going to the right. Let's take a look at this in a little bit more detail. Now, you might be saying, ma'am, I don't understand. How is it the same thing if you're using different angles? Remember, all I want you to pay attention to in this video is the direction of the vectors. Let's call this R. Let's call this R. Let's call the, the horizontals Rx and the verticals Ry. X is going to the right over here and it's going to the right over here. Cool. Same thing. Let's take a look at Ry. Ry is going up. Ry is going up. So essentially, these two diagrams are representing the same scenario. One is using a 60 degree angle. One is using a 30 degree angle. But we know geometry. We can fill in the rest of the angles over here. That would be a 90 degree angle. If this is 60, this must be 30. Because remember, angle sum triangle must give you 180. If that's 90 and that's 30, that must be 60. These are exactly the same triangles. Now remember, I said that when we resolve a vector into its components, when we break a vector down into, a, into its components, we need to use trigonometry. So what did I mean by trigonometry? Let's go over a very, very brief recap. If we are looking for the opposite side, we use sine or sin. Doesn't matter how you say it, we use sine or sin. So if I want to find out this magnitude over here, let's call it R y okay because it's the the vertical if i want to find ry and i have this angle over here i'm going to use sine because sine is opposite over hypotenuse opposite over hypotenuse if i'm looking for the adjacent side so say i'm looking for rx over here and i'm given this angle over here i will use cos because look Rx is adjacent to the angle. 
So again, if we were looking for this purple side, RY, and we're using this angle over here, theta, you would use sine because RY is opposite. I hope you can see that. Opposite the angle. RY is opposite my angle. So you would si use sine because remember sine is equal to opposite over hypotenuse. That's from grade 10. If you are looking for the adjacent component, so look at this diagram over here now, there's your theta, you're looking for, for, for Rx, Rx is adjacent to the angle, then what you would use is cos, because remember from grade 10, cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse. So let's do this example over here. Let's pretend that this vector is 10 Newton and it's acting at an angle of 30 degrees relative to this horizontal over here. And they ask me to find, let's call this vector A. Let's say they ask me to find the vertical component of A. Now remember, the question is asking for the vertical component of A. But another thing that they could have said is they could have said work out A, Y or work out the perpendicular component of vector A. All of those questions would refer to the same thing. We are looking for this component over here, the vertical component. And I'm just gonna label it over here, A, Y. Now, because we're looking for A, Y, look at the angle that we're given. We are given 30 degrees. Now, where is A, Y compared to the angle? A, Y is opposite the 30 degrees. And what trig ratio do you know that uses opposite over hypotenuse? Opposite over hypotenuse is sine. Sine of an angle is equal to the opposite side over the hypotenuse. And you could say, okay, ma'am, I get why you're using opposite, right? Because you're looking for the side opposite the 30 degrees and our angle's 30 degrees. So you're gonna use the opposites. But why are you using hypotenuse? Look at the triangle. Remember, this is a 90 degree triangle. Look at the hypotenuse. Remember, the hypotenuse is opposite the 90 degree angle. The hypotenuse in this scenario is given to us. We know the hypotenuse. It's 10 newtons. So basically what we're doing is we're saying sine of 30. What is opposite the 30? A, Y. And what is the hypotenuse of the triangle? 10 there we go. Now I can solve for a y. How do you solve for a y? You take the 10 over. So it's divided by 10. When you take it over, it becomes times by 10. 10 sine 30 equals a y. Remember the unit of this is newtons. Let's actually work out an answer for that. I get a y is 5 newtons up. Now how did I get 5? You say 10 multiplied by sine 30. Remember, this is a force. Look at your unit. It's measured in Newton. So your unit here must be Newton. And why am I saying up? Well, we want a component of a vector. Vectors need direction. So you have to give this direction. And why is it up? Because look at AY. It's pointing upwards. Now, in the future, you don't necessarily have to go and lay it out like this. You see the things that I'm circling at the moment? where you first have to write it as a fraction, use a trig ratio, write it as a ratio. You don't have to do that. The shortcut that we use is you look at what you're trying to find. We're trying to find a Y. So you know that you are looking for something that is opposite the angle given. So we're going to use sine. The angle given is 30. So we're going to use sine 30. And you always pop the hypotenuse that is given in front. 10 sine 30 newtons and you work that out it's going to give you 5 newtons can you write it like this will you write it as a fraction first absolutely but i'm just trying to show you shortcuts which will save you time so 10 because this is the hypotenuse sine because we're looking for the side opposite the 30 and 30 degrees obviously because that's my angle now this one is looking for the horizontal component of the vector. So it says here, if we are looking for the adjacent component to the angle, so the angle given is 20, and I'm asking you for this blue one here, let's call it, let's call this vector B, so let's call this Bx. Bx is adjacent 
to the angle. Now, some of my students say, ma'am, how do you know that you mustn't use sine? How do you know that you must use cos? Well, because remember, cos is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse and BX is adjacent. It's next to the angle. It's not opposite. So that's another thing. Ma um, kids say to me, my students say to me, ma'am, how do you know that you mustn't use sine? Because sine would be if I was looking for this component over here, because sine is opposite, but I'm not looking for opposite the angle. I'm not looking for this one. I'm looking for adjacent, right? So we know we're going to use cos because cos of the angle is equal to adjacent side over hypotenuse. Remember, this is a 90 degree triangle. So how do I do this? Well, the angle is 20, so cos 20. Adjacent is what I'm looking for. It's BX. It's the that side over there. And the hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse in this triangle? The hypotenuse in this triangle is 8 Newton. There we go. There it is. That's the hypotenuse. Remember, hypotenuse is opposite the 90. So we say BX. You take the 8. It's divided by 8. You take it over. It becomes 8 cos 20 newton and remember our little shortcut we always put the hypotenuse first and then we put the trig ratio that we use and then the angle so 8 cos 20 you work that out and i get 7,52 newtons just note that on my calculator it says 7,5175 and so on i've decided decided to round off to two decimal places so that rounds up to a 2 7,52 newtons. Remember the rule in science is in, in physics is to round off to at least two decimals. So you can leave it with more decimal places, that's fine. But my answer is not complete. I'm not going to get the marks because the question would say, determine the horizontal component of vector B. Determine the horizontal component of vector B. In other words, determine Bx. But because this is a force... It's a vector, it needs a direction. So you would have to say to the right because it's pointing to the right. I hope that that has been helpful for you. Remember the reason why we are doing that is, and I'm showing you how to resolve vectors into components, is because you need to be able to do that to do questions like this one, which I will do at a later video, and ones like this, which I will do in a later video. So I will see you then.